DreamWorks does a little bit better on taxes, but like we said before, they have some numbers way over 100 years. So this is telling me that they're getting um, tax rebates from the government, which probably shows that they're not doing it as good as they could, or they're just really effective with their infrastructure and building and they can get incentives from small governments and other people. Um, interest burden, Disney does better than operating margins. They're consistently doing better. Their asset turnover is consistently better. Their profit margin is much higher. The profit margin on DreamWorks is negative. So this is telling me that they might be losing money here. And it, does, it doesn't indicate that because they have a negative ROE and a negative ROA versus a, a stellar ROE and ROA on Disney's side. So profitability looks like Disney's doing better. Um, market to market value and supply chain uh, value. Uh, DreamWorks beats them on the price to earnings. So maybe people think that in the future they're going to do much better. However, uh, enterprise value is much, much higher on the Disney side. So I'm thinking that Disney's overall a little bit better company. So we're going to go Disney versus Viacom. I've already told you what Disney does. Let me tell you what Viacom does. Viacom produces media entertainment content. The company creates and acquires programming for television, the internet, mobile services, video games, and other consumer electronic products. Viacom also produces finances and distributes motion pictures to movie theaters and on DVD televisions, digital, and other platforms internationally. All right, so here we are. We have the current, we have the uh, short-term solvency, and it looks like Viacom does a little bit better on the current ratio. So let's, let's move on. And now we see the long-term solvency, um, very similar on asset turnover. Uh, Viacom is much more leveraged, but it's it's not within a realm that would concern me. Uh, the time interest earned, though, is and cash coverage is where Disney shines. They're cash cows. They have a, they have a lot of assets sitting around, uh, and they're very secure. So here we are with the profitability. We want to see an upward trend, and uh, we really do see that with Disney. Viacom does do a little bit better on taxes, pays a little bit less taxes. They pay much more in interest. Um, their operating margins is slightly better than um, that of Disney. And the ROE and ROA is, is higher than Disney's. However, they are leveraged by, by a greater deal than they are better than Disney. So I'm gonna have to go with Disney on this one. <clears throat> and then when we look at enterprise value, Disney just knocks it out of the park, and their economic value um, added is, is substantially higher. So I'm thinking Disney's the better company here. All right, now we have Disney versus Time Warner. Time Warner is a media entertainment company that um, includes cable television networks that provide programming, feature films, uh, television and home video production and distribution, and magazine publishing. All right, so we're gonna look at short-term solvency. Um, it looks like Warner does a little bit better on their current ratio, which is kind of in a trend, which is kind of surprising to me. However, the cash coverage and the, uh, and the other uh, ratios look a little bit better for Disney. So now we are with the cash coverage in tier. Again, looks much better. Your asset turnover is very similar. Um, profitability. Time Warner pays a little bit less in taxes, but it's very close. Um, and we want to see this upward trend. We're seeing it for both of them but Disney's upward trend is, is much more substantial, looks a little healthier. Um, they're multiplied very similar as far as leverage goes. So let's move on. Market value, um, it's kind of a flip flop. Looks like uh, Disney's, Disney's a better company here. All right, now we have 21st Century Fox. 21st Century Fox is a diversified media company. The company, uh, company's media and entertainment operations include the production and distribution of motion pictures and television programming, music, radio, and broadcasting, and sports. All right, so we've got short-term solvency. Um, it's looking like Fox, again, does a little bit better on their current ratio, which I said is kind of been a trend, but I think uh, further down the line, we'll see where Disney shines. Um, so they're, they're less multiply, uh, less leveraged. Very close, though, with the equity. Their times interest earned is very high on for Disney, very low for Fox. Their cash coverage, they're both healthy, but Disney's doing a lot better there. And uh, the asset turnover was too close to call. So now we have profitability. Um, 
Fox does a little bit better on taxes, but down the list, we're looking at Disney as the better company. ROE is insane right here for Fox. Uh, for 2016, they they had an ROE of 47, and they're but um and they're not really leveraged. However, uh, it's too it fluctuates too much. It's going from nine to four to 34 to 26 to 47. So what is it going to be next year? You know, we don't know. It could be 10 next year. While the ROE for Disney is consistently going up, it seems like the more stable company to be invested in. And then market value, uh, they're, they're both pretty good companies here. Uh, Fox does have a little bit less weighted average cost of capital, so they can get capital a little cheaper, but Disney overall looks like the better company. So now I'm going to pin the two top companies head to head, and uh, we're going to go Disney versus Lamar. And here we're looking at the equity multiplier. They're very close. The times interest earn for Disney is, is a lot higher, and the cash coverage is a lot higher for Disney. So uh, we'll see how that translates to long term uh, and profitability. So here's the long term solvency. Um, again, the cash coverage is a lot higher, and the asset turnover for Disney is pretty similar, but these companies aren't necessarily uh, involved in a whole lot of asset turnover. That's kind of a it's a little bit different of a, we look at operating margins for efficiencies over there. So we're going to look at operating margins, and it looks like uh, they're, they're both pretty close. Lamar does a little bit better, pays a little bit less taxes. Uh, the profit margin, surprisingly, is higher for Lamar. Um, and the ROE is very close to the same. ROE for Lamar is actually a little higher, too. And uh, they're both showing an upward trend, so I like both of them in those aspects. Um, so let's look at market value and supply chain. Um, Price to earnings is higher for Lamar, and so is market to book. But this uh, economic value added enterprise value, it shows me that Disney is, is here to stay. It's a, it's a solid company in that aspect. So overall, I'm going to go with Disney. It's kind of hard to beat Disney. Uh, they got a lot of different things going for them. They got, they're got diversified in a lot of different industries. And they, they do make money in almost all of them. So looks like the one I'm going to go with. Thank you.